Hey guys, this is New Sensei. In the past, I've made several videos about sites, focusing on the target recurse and Olympic style of archery. Now, I've made videos about different kinds of sites, uh, reviews of different sites, how to actually use the site, but I still get a lot of questions about, well, how do you use it? And when do you make the adjustments? How do you calibrate the site? These are very good questions. And this video will take a look at a practical scenario. Let's say you're in a competition and your arrows are landing everywhere on target and you want to make the right adjustment at the right time. What is that adjustment and when do you do it? While I have explained the concept behind adjusting your sights in a previous video, for the sake of viewers for this video, I'm going to quickly explain the basics. When you're using a site like this one, a single pin site, you want to follow the rule that is chase the arrow. Where the arrow lands, that's where you must adjust the site in order to compensate for the right elevation and the right windage. So if the arrows land too high, then you move your site up. If the arrows land too low, then you move your site down. If the arrows land to the left, you move your site to the left, and if the arrows land to the right, then you move your site to the right. You keep on following the arrow, and that way, your actual compensation when you shoot will match where the arrow should be hitting. A second point I want to raise now is, how do you see the arrow? Uh, I'm standing at six meters away, and normally you won't need optics to see an arrow at six meters and at around 10, 20, up to about 30 meters you can often track the arrow's flight and the shot placement by the naked eye. However, even on a close range target you might find that your arrows and knocks will be well hidden inside the target so this isn't always reliable. Now at longer distances, you have the opportunity to use optics. You have things like binoculars, or you have spotting scopes which are placed on a tripod. And these are allowed in competition. Tripods are very popular because you can place a spotting scope on the tripod next to you. It's already sighted into the target, so between shots, you can have a peep and see where your arrows are landing. Now, if you don't have a spider scope or a tripod, or there's no space on the line, you can use uh, binoculars or monoculars, um, the, the single options. And these are work the same way. Um, you basically have a peep the target, spot your arrows, and make the necessary adjustments. Um, the only downside with the binoculars is that because it's not pre-sighted in, you may find that you have to waste time Try to get um, the location correct when you're aligning your binoculars, uh, but otherwise they operate the same way and most people carry both at a competition and choose one or the other depending on the space and their preferences. Now that we have the basics of sighting out of the way, I want to talk about the process and the mindset in calibrating your sights. Uh, I want to talk about the most common beginner mistake when it comes to sighting. And this mostly applies to people who have just received their bow, have just bought a new site, and they're basically fidgeting with the site too much. And I'll explain what I'm talking about. So let's say you're starting out and you're shooting an arrow. So you've got your brand new bow, put your new arrows, your new site, and let's do a shot. We're going to pull back, do a shot. Okay, I'm going to go, oh, I was a little too high. I'm going to adjust my sight down or up just a bit here just to make things a little better. Okay, so my sight's adjusted. I'm going to shoot another arrow. Okay, load, knock, shoot a second arrow. All right, nice shot. Oh, that's too low now. Let's put the sight back down. Or oh, maybe it's to the left or maybe to the right. And this is the problem. Um, often you find that you become too fixated on making micro adjustments. You're changing with every arrow and every shot. And sometimes this isn't necessary. Um, the, the main reason behind this is you have to understand, well, why did the arrow go there? And here we see the result of those two shots. Now bear in mind, I am six meters away, so this isn't you know, great shooting. But I'm making a point here. 
The first shot is a little high above the X, the second shot is a little lower. This is after my slide adjustment. You see, I've gone a bit too far down. So my third shot, if I correctly calibrate the sight, might be smack in the middle. But here's the thing. What if these were bad shots? What if this was a fluke that I actually shot gold by accident and I'm making unnecessary sight adjustments? How do I tell the difference between a bad shot process and a bad sight adjustment? That's the dilemma. For many people, especially starting out, you need to recognize that the arrows on the target tell a story. Is the story caused by you as the archer or is it caused by your equipment and the sighting and so on? Remember that a lot of things can go wrong in your shot process. It might be for a lot of people, your release was horrible. You plucked the string, your hand's going out the wrong way, and the arrow's going and it's hit the target somewhere completely different to where you aimed at. Uh, sometimes it might be your back tension collapsing, so it's a much weaker shot. It might be your anchor dropping, or there's a gap between your hand and your jaw. Uh, it could be the wrong alignment. It could be uh, the wind took it. That's especially a problem on a windy day. So a lot of these factors can cause the arrows to drift away from where you want it to. And it can be very easy to make an adjustment to compensate for flaws in your technique. But then suddenly you shoot well. You execute a good shot and the sight setting is wrong. That is something which always plagues archers from old to new. So you've got to recognize the signs and symptoms of a good shot and a bad shot before you touch your sight. More important than good or bad shots is the idea of a consistent shot. Your shooting and your process must be as close to identical with every single shot as possible. That way we get a story. One arrow doesn't tell a story. One arrow might be a fluke, it might be a mistake, it might be an accident, or it might be a good shot. But six arrows shows consistency. Let's shoot six good shots. And here's the grouping. You can see that that's a pretty nice group. In fact, four of them are touching the same spot and two of them are just off to the side. So that's not bad for you know, six meters. But point being is that we can see that what I did was consistent. I aimed at the same point and they all went to the same place. But it's too high. My sight setting was too low. So to fix this, I know that if I move my sight up, this will move down to the center of the target. And that's the thing. With six arrows in the same place, I'm confident that what I'm doing is consistent, which means all I need to do is change the sight. If it's only one arrow, then it's very hard to make that assessment. But six arrows in one group tells me a story. This is simply a sight adjustment. Now, of course, if you're a beginner or an intermediate shooter, you may not have reached that particular level of consistency, and your grouping may look more like this. You can see it's a lot more spread out. There's some in the middle, some to the side, some low, some high, and this can be kind of frustrating because you still don't quite know exactly what you're doing wrong. Some of these, in fact, most of these may just be your form not yet being consistent. So there might be errors in your anchor and your release, which is causing arrows to go a bit out of whack. Um, or maybe your equipment out of tune and you're not you know, you're grouping consistently. But even though the group is much wider, you can still estimate the center of the group. And in this particular example, the center of all these arrows is roughly around here, which means I can make sight adjustments. So I can bring the sight to the right level to increase my average score, as more arrows will be around the gold and red, rather than fly high to the blue and black, or left or right and low or so on. So this can be used to assess your sight adjustment. Now, your shooting may be so bad that this is your typical grouping, but even though the grouping is now white, black, red everywhere, there is still a center of grouping. So we go, okay, it's around here, 
So that means I can make the necessary slight adjustment to bring the elevation and windage in the right place. So on average, I'm more likely to hit the center of the target. And here we have a more complicated example. We've got five arrows on the left side of the target and one arrow in the gold. Now you might be thinking, yeah, gold, bullseye, that's my good shot, I'm shooting well, that's what I'm hitting. But the story is different. Here, where the five arrows are, that's the majority of your shots. That's a consistent process. Now it may be, this could be a good shot and this could be bad shots. But whatever you're doing, this is consistent. This isn't. It may be better to adjust for this rather than for this. Now, that said, this could be a bad shot as well. This could be a good shot. It's not about good and bad, it's about recognizing most of the time, what are you doing? And often you can't address a form fault in the middle of a match. So adjust for what you see, not what you think should be. So in this case, I want to adjust for this grouping and this is an outlier I should ignore. Now one of the most annoying groupings to work with is when you have two different groupings. Here and here. Now what this tells me is that I've got two problems. One of these is a good shot process, the other isn't and I'm making a consistent mistake half the time. Or this could be both bad shot processes but in either case I have to pick which one to adjust for. This is a dilemma, which one do you do? And in this case I might just leave it towards the middle here. And, I, and after a while I might figure out that I'm doing something right or wrong. But in this case I can only work with what I see. Sometimes you can work with what you feel. Now personally I have a habit of jerking to the right on a bad shot. So I personally, in the back of my mind, might recognize that these are the bad shots and these are the good shots. So I might dare to move my sight to the left and bring closer to the middle. But if you're going to do that, you have to be very sure that you recognize which shots are the ones you can replicate and which shots are the ones which are exceptions. So those are some of the common patterns that you can adjust for. Remember, the grouping tells a story. While well, you can adjust for a single arrow, and bear in mind that sometimes the mistakes are very obvious, like you have the wrong sight setting, you've got your 50 meter setting for a 30 meter distance, in which case you can recognize it right away and fix it right away. But most of the time, especially for beginners and intermediate shooters, you don't really know what caused that arrow to go that way. It might be a vein coming off, it might be a bent arrow, or the wind, or a technique flaw, Anything could happen with a single arrow. And when you're starting out, you want to build consistency. So don't stress too much about one arrow being off. Shoot your end and assess the grouping from there. However, that's really easy to say when you're in practice or you're doing free shooting. What about if you're in a competition or a ranking round? These events have a limited number of arrows. So if you don't get it right early, you're throwing points away. And every shot which you don't hit the goal and you don't adjust the sight for could be a potential 10 which you've given to your opponents. So this is more of the intermediate to advanced level. When do you make that adjustment during a competition? In most events, you get sighting ends. These are one or two non-scoring ends before the round begins, allowing you to adjust your sights for the target. However, you will still need to make adjustments during the shoot, either at that distance and compensating for small errors or changes in conditions, or when you change distances, and perhaps your sight settings are quite right. You need to know when to make the adjustment to maximize your score and minimize the amount of points lost. What you often see the pros do at the world level is that they shoot one arrow, they go, hmm, and then make the adjustment and the next arrow goes bang in the middle. That's great, except what if the adjustment was wrong? Now, as a professional who's trained for thousands of arrows every month, for years, they know the process well enough to diagnose their own problems. So yes, they can make an accurate adjustment with only one shot. 
But if you're not at that level, then your adjustment could be a mistake. The fewer arrows you use, the less reliable the judgment will be. The other extreme is to shoot a six arrow end, take the grouping and make the adjustment based on those six arrows. This will give you a much clearer picture as to what's happening and what changes you need to make. The problem with this is that six arrows is 60 potential points. And if your grouping is way off, you've thrown away the chance to come back and earn more points. And that could put you very far behind your opponents. The compromise is to shoot three arrows, adjust for that grouping, and then shoot your remaining three arrows. This gives you a balance between getting an accurate sight adjustment compared to bleeding points. So in short, the more confident you are in your form and process, the fewer arrows you need to make an adjustment, to the point where one arrow is all you need. However, the more inconsistent you are, the more data points you need to make the right assessment, which means you may need six arrows to make the right side adjustment. That might mean throwing away all these points, but it's better than making the wrong adjustment and shooting it radically for the entire round. Hopefully that covers most of the questions you have about adjusting sides and especially doing so in a competition setting. I know a lot of people get very anxious and frustrated about tinkering with the side mid-competition. So hopefully this gives you a clearer picture as to what's happening and how you can fix it. And again, the more confident you are and the more experience you have, the sooner you can make the changes. But don't pressure yourself to be a pinpoint shooter on your first arrow if you're not up to that level. It's okay to have big groupings and work from there. With time and practice, they will get better and your side adjustments will be fewer and further in between. Anyway, this is New Sensei. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.